Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, we will start with the new lecture, lecture 5 and that is uh, going to cover uh, two effect on the flow stress which we did not talk about in the previous lecture that is the effect of strain rate and temperature. Okay. So, let me define a strain rate to you first. Okay. So, basically we will be talking in this lecture, so flow stress as a function of strain rate and temperature. These two effects we did not discuss earlier. So, now a new uh, term has come here strain rate. So, strain already we know what do we mean by strain. Okay. So, strain rate is basically you can say d epsilon divided by dt that is the what is at what rate I am putting the strain. So, that is a very important parameter during the deformation process. Okay. So, in trolling, forging, extrusion all these processes if you see whether I am deforming slowly okay, or I am deforming at a very high rate. Okay. Some idea about this rate you must be having from the uh, your uh, uh, basic courses that uh, impact is one of the type of loading condition and one is where you do very slow deformation. So, a very slow deformation and a very high deformation where you call it as impact. Okay. So, the material behavior is in very different in these two cases. So, a ductile material uh, which is showing a good amount of ductility in case of a slow strain rate test becomes a almost like a brittle material in a impact kind of condition okay and uh, impact kind of conditions are very important in case of automobile application nowadays where they want to know the crash worthiness okay that how much energy a material will take during a uh, high speed collision okay so strain rate is a very important uh, parameter in deformation uh, industrial deformation also that at what rate i am deforming the material Okay. So, if I want to uh, show the effect of strain rate, okay, now uh, we will also bring the effect of temperature here. So, the earlier flow curve which I showed you in the previous lecture, okay, you can consider that uh, all those type of stresses uh, uh, flow stress curve you will see at in a material at a temperature which is less than 0.4 of T m. So, what is T m? T m is the melting point of material. Okay, so, for example, melting point of material is, uh, and of course, you have to take it in Kelvin. Okay. So, a melting point of material is suppose 1000 Kelvin. Okay. Then, if you are deforming the material at lower than 400 Kelvin, Okay, then you will see the uh, flow stress curve which I showed you in the previous lecture. But if I am deforming at a temperature which is more than 0.4 of its melting point, so uh, let us say for more than 400 Kelvin, okay, then you will see now the effect of temperature also on the flow stress curve. Okay. Uh, so, first to, uh, to define the effect of strain rate on flow stress. Okay, again we can take the, uh, let us uh, now because we will be always talking about true stress from this lecture, let us I will remove this T part here. So, uh, if I am writing sigma simply it is true stress and epsilon is of course true strain. Okay. And let us say I am taking a simple, simple uh, deformation condition which is basically a steady state condition. So, after the yielding you have a steady state flow. Okay. So, usually you will see curves like this, another one like this. Okay. So, I have drawn different curves. Okay. 
Now, the temperature is constant here. So, these are all at constant temperature, some temperature which is more than 0.4 T m. Okay. So, let us say this constant temperature is more than 0.4 T m. Okay. And uh, so, now what is the difference between all this flow stress curve that they are at different strain rate. Okay. Okay, they are all at different strain rate okay. and uh, from their flow stress values I can say that epsilon dot 4 is more than epsilon dot 3, more than epsilon dot 2, more than 1. Okay. So, lower the strain rate the flow stress will be low, okay. higher the strain rate the flow stress will be high. Okay. So, if I want to give a relationship to this kind of uh, effect of a strain rate on the stress, okay, a very generalized uh, uh, relationship between stress and strain rate will be something like this. So, this is C 1 okay, epsilon dot to the power m at constant strain and temperature. So, already we have said that all the plots are at constant temperature and constant in strain means suppose I just uh, take a particular strain value here okay, and find out that for the epsilon 1 dot what was the stress sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, sigma 4 and so on. Okay. So, they will follow a relationship like this where m is strain rate you can call it as hardening also or sometime we call it as sensitivity index that what is the sensitivity of stress to strain rate. Okay. So, this m is uh, defining that strain rate sensitivity index of the stress okay. or you can also call it as strain rate hardening. So, it is similar to what we saw in the previous lecture where we talked about the strain hardening. So, at low temperature material experiences a strain hardening. You can see in these curves the strain hardening part is very small okay. and uh, in fact after a certain strain there is no effect of strain on the stress. So, there is no strain hardening at all. Okay. So, at higher temperature deformation the strain hardening is uh, of the material is very low. Okay. So, the strain rate hardening is a very important parameter which uh, stabilizes the deformation or which gives a uniform uh, deformation. Okay. So, material experiences strain rate hardening and how to find out this strain rate sensitive index again we can do similar thing what we did earlier. If I take logarithmic on both the side it will become something like this. C 1 is your some uh, material parameter okay. and m ln epsilon dot. Okay. So, basically if I plot ln of epsilon dot versus ln of sigma the slope should give me the strain rate sensitivity index. So, okay. so if I plot ln of sigma versus ln of epsilon dot I should get some point like this. Okay. If I fit a linear curve here the slope should give me the strain rate sensitivity of the material. Okay. And the strain rate sensitivity is usually in a hot deformation cases uh, you will find uh, for industrial uh, hot deformation process like rolling extrusion and all that the value may be somewhere between 0.1 to 0.2. Okay, for hot deformation in industry. Okay. Another way uh, uh, important deformation phenomena in materials what we call a super plasticity, I am not going to detail right now just to give you an idea okay, the value will be more than 0.4. Okay and uh, so it is highly strain rate sensi uh, sensitive um, condition okay and just to kind of connect it with your other understanding for example fluid mechanics or fluid okay uh, the newtonian 
viscous fluids have m equal to 1. So, for Newtonian viscous fluid the standard sensitivity index is 1. Okay. So, for other materials either it can be less than 1, uh, in this case it is less than 1 okay, in materials okay, and th th usually it is in the range of uh, or lower than point uh, normal hot deformation 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, so plasticity more than 0 0.4, okay, a very important parameter to have during the hot deformation process. Now, how to uh, find out that what is the strain rate which you are imposing in the during a tensile test okay, which you which we normally do in the labs. Okay. So, just to give you an idea that uh, if I want to find out that what is the strain rate at which I am deforming the material. Uh, basically, when you deform the material what you control or what your machine controls is the cross head speed that how fast or slow it is moving the cross head it is not going to give you a strain or a strain rate okay that you have to uh, or of course there are uh, softwares which can do that but uh, just to have an understanding of that i am giving you an idea here so basically cross head velocity if you see cross head velocity if i want to find out okay v will be equal to dl upon d Okay, so, what is the change uh, movement of the cross head divided by the time it takes in that movement. Okay. So, if I in terms of uh, simple engineering strain or in strain rate if I want to find out then it will be d e dot will be equal to d e upon d t that will be equal to d l minus l naught divided by l naught upon d t is all in differential since l naught is your uh, constant. So, it comes out 1 upon l naught and this become d l by d t. Okay. So, my e dot becomes b upon l naught. Okay. So, if I know my cross head speed that okay, I am moving cross head at this speed which I can easily find out from my machine. And if I know my original length, I can easily get the engineering strain rate. Okay. So, engineering strain rate is the rate which or it is the original uh, strain rate uh, which you are imposing. Okay. You will be taking only the original cross sectional uh, original length of the sample. But again as we said that during deformation your continuously length is changing. Okay. So, whether you are imposing a initial uh, strain rate, initial constant strain rate or you are imposing a uh, true strain rate. Okay. That is also again a, a kind of a debate uh, you can have okay, that whether I should impose a constant co strain rate or I should impose a continuous uh, or co constant strain rate. So, this is my initial strain rate. and another can be my true strain rate. Okay. For that epsilon dot will be equal to d epsilon by d t that will be equal to d ln of l upon l naught by d t that will be equal to 1 upon l d l by d t that is equal to v by L. So, continuously the length is now changing. Here it was a constant length, it is a instantaneous length. Okay. So, if I want to find out in terms of uh, uh, or if I have, uh, so now to, to have this kind of constant true strain rate, okay, your machine has to has a, have a, a closed loop uh, servo hydraulic machine. That means, it is continuously feeding that what is the change in the length okay, or change in the extension to the machine and you can see that to maintain the cross head speed constant uh, to, to maintain the true strain rate constant and since my length is continuously changing my velocity also has to continuously change. 
whereas in this case my velocity will remain constant uh, to maintain because my L naught is constant. So, my I will have a uh, constant engineering strain rate, okay. but here it has to continuously change the velocity as the deformation progresses. So, you have to have a closed loop type of machine which is continuously feeding the uh, that what is the now the latest length okay, and accordingly the velocity has to uh, change. Okay. So, now you can see there is since the length is increasing, okay, so velocity has to continuously uh, decrease. Okay. So, this actually nowadays uh, all these are done by software. So, if you want a constant uh, true strength rate, you can give that kind of condition and it will be for the program will be following that using a loop. Okay. Now, what will be the effect of temperature? So, again I am draw, drawing some flow stresses here sigma versus epsilon. Okay. So, again I am taking a simplified uh, steady state type of flow okay, and giving them some temperature T 1, T 2, 3, T and these are all done at constant strain rate. Okay. So, when you want to change temperature you have to fix the strain rate as constant and keep changing the temperature for different uh, uh, samples or you can do at a constant temperature and keep changing the strain rate for different samples. Okay. And from the flow stress value I, I can tell you that uh, my T 1 will be more than T 2 it will be more than T 3. So, it is uh, exactly opposite of what we saw in case of a strain rate. In the strain rate I said T 3 is uh, epsilon dot 3 will be more than epsilon dot 2 and then epsilon dot 1 that was the case in case of, but here for increase in flow stress the, the condition will be like this. Okay. And uh, again we can uh, define this uh, uh, behavior using some relationship between stress and temperature and that will be something like this sigma C 2 exponential q by r t at constant strain and strain rate. Okay. So, again I can take at a particular strain rate a strain here at different temperature what is the t, at t 1 sigma 1 is the flow stress, t 2 sigma 2 is the flow stress, t 3 sigma 3 is the flow stress and so on. Okay. So, you can see that it is in the denominator. So, as temperature is in going to increase my stress will is going to decrease. This Q is the activation energy, energy for deformation okay. and its value is joule per mole. Temperature is of course, in Kelvin, okay. the temperature is in Kelvin and R is your universal gas constant. Okay, C 2 is again some constant for material. Okay. So, again I can find out what will be the value of Q here. Okay. If I again take logarithmic on both the side it will become something like this C 2 plus Q by R T. Okay. So, if I plot a curve between ln of sigma versus 1 by T. Okay then I will be getting, uh, so 1 by T is increasing here means uh, temperature is decreasing here. So, you can see my flow stress has to increase here, okay. different values coming from here. I can plot a straight line here, fit a best fit line and the slope will give me the value of Q by R. So, from here I can find out that what is the activation energy for deformation. So, as we saw that when we were uh, relating stress with the strain rate, uh, important parameter is the strain rate sensitivity index. What is the sensitivity of the stress to strain rate? When we are relating stress with the temperature, the important parameter which relates temperature with the stress is the activation energy that what is the activation energy of deformation. Okay. Now, uh, 
we can uh, uh, try to see some more uh, type of curves. I have shown you a very simple curve uh, till now. Okay. Now, you can see that there are variety of curves which flow curves which you can find out when you are doing a deformation at high temperature. Okay. So, that I will show you. So, this different type of flow curves. So, one we have already seen okay, at low temperature sigma versus epsilon you will have some elastic part then plastic part and then deformation and some fracture here. Okay. So, you can see that in this case the flow stress is continuously increase, increasing as a function of a strain. Okay. So, this is what you will get usually at temperature lower than 0.4 Tm. Okay. Uh, this kind of behavior you will always see where you will only get a phenomena what we call as work hardening. Okay. As you increase the temperature now, okay, another type of curve uh, again we have seen just now okay, that you have elastic part then this and then steady state behavior. So, this is what we call as a steady state behavior because there is no change in the stress value as a function of a strain. So, uh, everything is, is, is in a steady state condition, there, is, there are no changes in the uh, material okay. and this happens when uh, how we get work hardening because of multiplication of dislocation, your dislocation density keep increasing. Okay. Uh, so, since we are not getting anything here that means, the dislocation multiplication or dislocation generation is kind of nullified by some other mechanism. So, what is that mechanism? Because we are deforming at a temperature more than 0.4 Tm here. Okay. Now, other uh, microstructural processes will start and one of them is called uh, dislocation recovery. And the dislocation recovery is helped by the vacancy concentration in the material. So, you must be knowing that equilibrium vacancy concentration of material increase exponentially with temperature. Okay. So, you may increase temperature linearly, but the vacancy concentration will increase exponentially. And these vacancies help the dislocation in recovery process. Okay. The actual mechanism is dislocation climb. Okay. So, re dislocation recovery takes place. So, the number of dislocation which are generating okay, the same um, number of dislocations are getting recovered. So, you because of that you get a steady state deformation. Okay. Now, another type of curve which you will see, I have not shown you till now, which will be something like this. So, it goes like this, make a hump, come down and become steady straight. Okay. So, this is another type of curve and a different microstructural process will take place here. This is as I told you recovery will be there, this is the type of curve which you will have when you are having dynamic recrystallization. All these th terms we will see later on. Okay. Another type of curve which you can see instead of this is like this, you sorry, go like this, goes up and something does something like this. Okay. So, instead of one hump, you get multiple humps. Okay. Again, this is a process where recrystallization is happening or dynamic recrystallization is happening. Okay. In multiple stage okay. and usually it happens at, uh, at uh, lower uh, st stress and higher temperature. So, when stress is lower and temperature is higher. So, again if you compare with this one, this will be at lower stress higher temperature. Now, uh, uh, one interesting thing you can do is, uh, if you see earlier also I was showing that the effect of uh, strain rate and temperature is entirely different on the stress. Okay. If you remember, if I inc increase the strain rate okay, or decrease the temperature, okay, my stress will increase. Okay. 
and if I do other way around. So, there is a almost opposite effect of strain rate and temperature on stress and we have given you two different equations for that. Okay. You can uh, in fact, a uh, smart thing was done okay, and done by two scientists and they on their name the parameter is known and this parameter is called Zener Holoman parameter which we call it as Z. Okay. This combines both this effect in one. So, Z can be written as epsilon dot exponential Q by R T. So, you can see epsilon dot and T A both are now considered here and sigma can be then just can be shown as some function of z, where both the effects are combined together and uh, brought in a single equation. So, when your temperature is low, uh, strain rate is high means the z will be more and the stress will be more. When the strain rate is low, temperature is more, your z will be less, so your stress will be less. So, now sigma is a direct function of uh, and for, for function we will see what kind of functions can be there, but it can be some function of the zener holoman parameter. Okay. So, I think uh, with this uh, I have explained you uh, different type of flow stresses which you will see in hot deformation and what is the effect of two very important parameters which you control during deformation okay, which is strain rate and temperature. So, how fast you are deforming and we have what temperature you are deforming. So, flow stress will be dependent on that okay. and flow stress will also be keep changing depending upon what is the, the condition of deformation. So, whether you are deforming at what temperature okay, or what strain rate. Okay. So, different conditions will give you different type of flow stresses and of course, there will be change in the microstructure accordingly. Okay, and that is what we want when we are doing any hot deformation process, we want to change the microstructure and those microstructure will help us giving in the properties which we want. Okay. So, thank you.